Um, well, first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone here at IIS uh, for the opportunity of being here. It's such an exciting time, and you know, it's wonderful to be close to, to all of you. Um, so uh, my talk is uh, related to the, um, you know, to the topics of the, the theme of this year's, uh, which is uh, the variational theory and geometry and PD. Um, so in this particular case, I'm going to talk about both. And, and in fact, what I have done so far is working on understanding the connections between a variational theory for PDEs, which, is, which I call the phase transitions, um, and, the, and the variational theory for minimal surfaces. So let me start by, by telling you what these things are. Uh, so for minimal surfaces, uh, actually hypersurfaces, By these, uh, so there have been many talks about this, but I'm uh, just summarize what they are. Um, it's a critical point of the area. So the word minimal doesn't mean minimizer. <laughs> it means that it's a stationary point okay, of, the, of the area. Um, and then as such, we can uh, um, talk, for example, about the Morse index of these subjects, which is the second uh, variation of the area on these subjects. Uh, so this is a bilinear, a quadratic form, right? So and as such, we can look at the index of this. So this we call the index <coughs> of sigma. Um, and this is what minimal surfaces are. On this side, we have the phase transitions. Phase transitions, by this I mean critical points, so u, epsilon, critical point of e epsilon of u, which is this energy, where, uh, so we have here the Dirichlet energy, and a potential energy, and this potential is, for example, this function. The whole, the whole uh, point here is that the function looks like a W itself. So in this case, the function of this is a double wall potential. Uh, and as such, uh, first, uh, well, something I forgot here to mention about minimal surface is that they satisfy uh, the equation mean curvature equal to zero. So this is a first order condition, and the Morse index is a second order condition, uh, second order property that we can study about these subjects. In this case, the first order will be, uh, say that they satisfy the equation uh, Laplacian of u minus the first derivative of the potential equals zero, right? One see this by just differentiating this and integrating by parts. Uh, and Again, up to second order, we can talk about Morse index of the second variation of the energy, and we call this the index of u epsilon. Okay? So in this setting, the objectives, uh, the objectives of the thing that I have done and many other people have done could be summarized in the following. So objective one, understanding the statement uh, the level set, so this is the statement, u epsilon equal to zero of these solutions, sorry, of these solutions converges, and here I'm going to put another uh, another mark to a minimal surface sigma as epsilon goes to zero. Okay, so I will explain briefly what, what this means. But the second objective, before I go to to more details, is comparing the comparison in between 
compare both uh, compare both Morse theories. Okay, so kind of uh, both develop and compare both Morse theories. Um, okay, let me just make sure uh, forgetting anything. So the the theorem that I've chosen to to talk about briefly is a theorem that is joined with uh, Pedro Gaspar, which is kind of in the parallel of what is has been done to the for the Morse theory for the um, area functional, but in the setting of the Allen can. And of course, this is a program that has. Uh, you know, seen many advances by by Fernando and Andres Hans and many collaborators that they have in the setting of the algorithm pitch theory. And in this case, the theorem that I'm choosing to present uh, is the following. So there are uh, infinitely many. Limit interfaces and by limit interface. Where are we on R n here? Sorry. What are we on? What's R n? It's going to be a closed manifold. So there are infinitely many limit interfaces in generic closed manifolds, and by this I mean the following. So a limit interface is a sigma minimal that is obtained as the limit of the level set u equal to 0 when epsilon goes to 0. And by generically, we mean uh, you know, th there's a meager set that we're not considering of metrics on a fixed manifold. OK, I want to tell you the more or less the history about this. But um, let me also say that. Uh, if you want to understand these things more, more deeply, we're organizing this seminar on Fridays in which uh, we're discussing this topic. So I'm not going to try to, uh, I, I thought of presenting a heuristics of why <coughs> this one can expect that these solutions converge to minimal surfaces, uh, but I don't think I have enough time for that. But uh, let me just say that this was uh, explored perhaps uh, for the first time in the context of geometric analysis by De Georgi and, and some of his students in, in, in PISA. And, um, and it was developed by other people that I will mention uh, now. Is there some physical phenomenon? That right. So yes, the, the motivation of this, this, is this equation, or perhaps a very similar one, uh, this is a simplified version of it, is known as the allen kahn equation. Or also, it appears in the context of a kahn hilliard theory. Um, and the, the mod what they model is the, the transition in between two different al alloys of metals that coexist together in an environment. So in a given volume, uh, what can happen is, I, I recommend, for example, there is a video by this uh, blacksmith. It's called uh, Bob Kramer. He's a uh, master blacksmith here in the US. He, he makes kitchen knives. And there he's making one of these knives. And then he, at some point in the video, he says, well, uh, I'm going to take the knife out. I'm, I'm going to show you the phase transition, right? I thought this was a phenomenon that you couldn't see, because we're talking about very uh, hot metals, right? So he takes the knife out, and then you see the shadow of the phase transition when the when the the blade is cooling down. You can see the phase transition, and, and that's amazing. So this is the kind of phenomenon they were trying to study, Allen Kahn, and they argued that this evolves as the mean curvature flow. So it's proportional to the curvature. So this is a parabolic equation, of course. And in this context, I'm just interested in the elliptic case, which is the stationary point. Because the stationary points of the mean curvature flows are minimal surfaces. So in that sense, one will expect these to converge to, to minimal surface. Um, so yeah, thank you. OK, so um, let me see. I have so many things to talk about. OK, let me, just, <laughs> let me just tell you about the regularity. Uh, 
So the regularity for dimensions three between n, so I'm talking n close, so the dimension between three and seven, uh, one can prove the following. So this is the work of many people. I'm just going to mention a, a few names. So Hutchinson and Tonegawa, they first studied this in a very generic case. Then there is papers by Tonegawa, and Tonegawa, Rika Masekera, and myself, that if you put them together, you can prove the following statement. Uh, assume there is C, find a number, such that the supremum on epsilon of the energies, and here I'm thinking that epsilon is a sequence that's going to zero, OK? And one knows that the Morse index of these things is bounded together with the energies, then the energy density that I'm going to call E epsilon u, which is just the integrand of the energy, converges as a measure to a delta function, which we can write as integral multiples of delta functions that are supported on disjoint smooth embedded minimal surfaces. OK, and mi is a natural number. So the theorem is, in, in fact, more precise. It tells you that the convergence uh, of, the de of these uh, objects, so l let me draw a picture first so that you can understand what I'm saying. This is saying the following. Let's say these are closed manifold, OK? And we have a solution of the Allen-Kahn equation. And this is the level set u equals 0. What's going to happen is that on this side, the solution is going to be close to 1. On this side, the solution is going to be close to minus 1. So the profile of the function is going to be like this. And in this case, so if the picture was more or less like this, so probably what's going to happen is that this level set is going to converge to this table minimal surface. OK? But uh, to make this, so the, the convergence here you can measure in different ways. So a particular way of doing it is in the sense of varifolds. This was actually done in this context by Ilmanen when he was studying the parabolic flow. So he proved that the parabolic flow of this converges to the mean curvature flow. Um, so, um, OK. So this is the, the basis, this, let's say, the beginning of you trying to, well, let's construct many solutions of this. Let's try to construct many solutions of this and see that they converge to minimal surfaces. Perhaps we can prove that there are many minimal surfaces. Uh, there's also another point of view, which is taking a minimal surface and trying to construct solutions. So this was done by uh, Pacar and Ritteret and, and other people. Uh, the, for example, this group in Chile of, of Del Pino, Kowalczyk, et cetera. They have uh, constructed solutions, entire solutions to this equation that uh, resemble entire minimal surfaces in R3. Not entire, but I mean complete minimal surfaces in R3. Um, OK, I have two more minutes. So uh, I, I would like to tell you a little bit about this theorem with, with Pedro. So I'm going to first convince you in one minute that one can do something to construct solutions. So observe that plus 1 and minus 1 are always solutions. The energy of which is 0, solutions, energy. Uh, zero is always a solution to, but the energy of zero is of the order one over epsilon. So, so this W is just, it's not just any double well shape. I mean, you're yes. using this W. Well, uh, it works for any anything that has three critical points, only three critical points. Okay, two which are on them are mini minimizers at the same level. Um, so you could you could choose something like this, for example, that is more to one side. OK. Um, and as well, if, the, if you have something like this, you will have a similar phenomenon where solutions would like to concentrate around these points, and the zero level set is going to carry all the energies. 
Okay, so, um, but then what else? Uh, th well, these solutions have a lot of energy, right? There are other solutions like these ones, which uh, most solutions are going to be u epsilon. Um, most solutions will have energy, which is the area of u equals zero. Okay, so I think I'm, I'm out of time. So let me just uh, wrap this up very quickly. So the idea here is that you have two global minimizers. The only minimizers of this functional in the sub of space in which you can compute that energy, right, are minus one and one. This tells you that you can do a mountain pass at least and construct a solution by the mountain pass method. It turns out that one can do higher dimensional families and construct indeed a sequence of solutions for, for any p a solution of this equation and construct minimal surfaces, perhaps with multiplicity, that will converge uh, to something that has area, the energy that you expect. And moreover, one can prove that this uh, sequence of values satisfy a vial law, much in the, co the same way Fernando, uh, Andrea, and, and, and Jeff Geniff did it for the uh, area functional, and this implies theorems as, as the density of minimal surfaces or, um, you know, uh, many, many things you can say of, of that sort. So let me stop here. Thank you.